Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. He is a level three whiskey sommelier. He is a master level whiskey moot. And this is a whiskey called Whiskey Galore. That's right. Because classy. Because classy and it's a gift. <laughs> and you can't turn your nose up at a gift. Actually, we may not want to. No, it's a, actually a good whiskey. Don't ruin it. Uh, I mean. Build the tension. Uh, Build the tension. It's a horrible whiskey. No. I mean. We don't know. It could be a horrible whiskey. Or it could be a great whiskey. Who knows? I hate my job. You know, that's really rude in certain countries. Is it? Yeah. We got a worldwide it audience. Means, it, it means basically, why don't you have sex with me? Here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> How fast can I do it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> right, right out of the gate, man. Wow. All right, so this is a gift now. Terry McCullough gave us this gift. When he gave me a gift, it was the new Longmorn 16. Right. When he sent a gift to you, it was whiskey galore. You know what? <laughs> I'll take what I can get. The very rare seven. Terry McCullough, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> Uh, okay, actually, so what do we, oh, what is, what's happening here? It has a pour spout. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So to make sure that you can do this without embarrassing yourself. I don't know. Maybe if I pour it all the way upside down, it does a pre-measured amount. Really? <laughs> Let's no. find out. I'm not going to find out. No, right here. Because if I'm wrong, <laughs> it's just gonna I'm going to pour like five ounces of whiskey <laughs> yeah, at one, and the whole lid's going to fall off in the glass. <laughs> You'll be fishing out the plastic. Yeah. Okay, so whiskey galore level three. Is, does not tell us level, which distillery. Level three. Small it is a sing, seven-year-old single malt scotch, <laughs> um, and it's, it's based on the story, uh, which a book was written and a movie was made. Um, it smells classic. 1941, if I remember correctly. Butterscotch and uh, the... caramel and sweetness. And... Yeah, I mean, this is probably a space side. Yeah. Oh, I, I really like that. Yeah. That's super tasty. 40%. A little bit spiky. And it, uh, it's a little watery, but the, the flavors that are there, very enjoyable flavors. The 40%, though. I thought it was... Is that the number to technically be... That's legal limit of whiskey. Okay, I thought it was 43. Mm -mm. All right, because you see 43 so often. Okay, this story you're going to like, because it's the ultimate Scottish mooching story. Yeah. Ooh. You remember the story of Ar Ablor Abenor when the workers found a hundred-year-old bottle of whiskey and then started drinking it? Yeah. It's sort of like that. Lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to read this because I didn't memorize it. So the SS Politician is an 8,000-ton cargo ship. Mm -hmm. It's making its way past Scotland uh, out of Liverpool, owned out of Liverpool. It's headed for Kingston, Jamaica, New Orleans yeah. with a cargo of whiskey... And it's something like 28,000 cases of single malt whiskey. Wow. Right? Yeah. There's or a lot. malt whiskey. There's usually like, how many in a case? A dozen? Twelve, Twelve, yeah. Twelve, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of whiskey. So, it shipwrecks off the north coast of Eriske, mm -hmm. in, but reachable by the locals. And so, it didn't sink. It's, it's uh, caught on the rocks. Right? So... The sailors all make it off alive. 336,000 bottles. That's a lot of bottles. Of whiskey. Right? So the sailors make it off alive. They make it to town. And they tell the townspeople, oh, we just shipwrecked a boat full of whiskey. And it's sitting on the rocks over there. Mm -hmm. And so overnight, the local townspeople load up into boats. Men dressed in women's dresses to help. To keep the whiskey and the oil from the ship off of their their clothes so there's no evidence, right? They <laughs> so boat I, out there. Honey, I need your dress. They managed to steal like 50,000, 30 to 50,000 bottles of whiskey. Yeah. They rescue from the ship. So the thing was, um, no one regarded it as stealing. They regarded it as sea bounty. <laughs> <laughs> Salvaged. A salvage operation, right? Yeah. So the guy who owned the boat was a, uh, I can't remember his name. I need to look it up. But wait, um, can I call what I do sea bounty? Yeah, it's a sea bounty. It's salvage. It's a salvage operation. If I stand in a yeah. bucket of salt water. Yeah, Rex has a salvage operation going. <laughs> right. So Charles McColl was a local tax officer, mm -hmm. and he was furious 
that there were now 30,000 bottles of whiskey in town that no one had paid taxes on. Mm. How dare they? Right. Cause, he said. Because taxes. his ex- extremely authentic when Scottish accent. When it accent. comes to whiskey, taxes <laughs> fix everything. That's right. They solve all problems. And so he actually gets the law to raid the town. And he catches a bunch of the inhabitants red-handed with whiskey. Mm-hmm. And they actually uh, put them before court. Now, unfortunately, no one in town thought they'd really done anything all that wrong, and so they all just got fined a little bit of money. <laughs> and uh, it was probably a lot less than what it would have cost. Yeah, because even the, the whiskey. Because even the police were like, "Come on, <laughs> right. come on." Yeah, and you open up the tr- yeah, you go to their house and it's come of on, yeah. So, but uh, he was not satisfied with that, Charles McCall. No, that's not right. right. Justice must be done, and so he actually did succeed in getting several of the townspeople imprisoned. What? For almost a year. What? For whiskey theft. This guy needs to be taken out behind the woods. Yeah, we need to find Charles McCall and just beat the shit out of him. All right, so I kind of like this. I do like this, yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's well, I say simple, but I'm getting the, the caramel sweetness and butterscotch, and then the longer I drink it, I'm actually getting a little bit of an apple note in there. It's still, I wish I knew what this was. It's still a bit uh, thin. You can taste the thinness, but it's not a single flavor boring whiskey. It's not the most interesting and amazing I've ever had, but for something called whiskey galore, it's better than what I was expecting. Man, I feel like I want to try a bunch of space sides until I settle on which space side this probably is. I think that is a worthwhile mission. Uh, I, I don't know. I can encourage that instinct. As a matter of fact, I can help you decide. Uh, it's made by Duncan Taylor. This is, I there, think. There's a bit of Glenlivet in here. Yeah, but it's not Glenlivet I'm tasting. There's too much citrus. No, there's Glenlivet. And there is Glenfarclas. Not Farclas. And there is some Glenmorangie. No, no, no. You gotta think of which distilleries and there's some contribute to blends. And some Macallan M. I'm sort of thinking Craigellicky. What do you think? That's not, not too far off. You're getting that citrus. Mm-hmm. Could be... Yeah, that's pretty damn close, actually. Hmm. Let's wow, go. that is really close. Yeah. Wow, it's a little more buttery on the nose mm-hmm. than this. But that's like 85%. Wow, that's close, yeah. Yeah. This one's spikier, but smells sweeter. So that's what's weird. So the Whiskey Galore smells more buttery than the uh, Craig Elegy, Right. But the Craig Elegy tastes smoother. Uh, then again, the Kregeliki was 13 years old, and this is only seven. Galore. <laughs> galore. <laughs> Nothing says classy like adding galore. Whiskey galore. <laughs> well, it's based on the actual book in the movie, uh, which is the title of the movie. Like Chesty LaRue? You're too close. One of the, well, I'm trying to read your labels. labels. All up in my space. You're making... Like, I can feel your body heat right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of creepy, actually. <laughs> that was enough for me to leave. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's try this one. Oh, I gotta open it first. Uh, Katie Fong. 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 Wait, one of these days, she, one of these, we're gonna correctly pronounce Katie's name. Well, one of these name. days she'll tell us how to get it, just nail it perfectly. Until then, it's Fong. 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 Uh, so I bought a bottle of Cavalan today, or Cavalan the other day. Cavalan, because we did the Taiwanese... After, yeah, after yeah. the video. It is amaze balls. Yeah. I am so impressed. Tropical fruit and butterscotch. How the hell did we Asians get so good at making whiskey? Yes, that is Whiskey pleasant. as a whole is an amazing subject. Every now and then, that. I'm attracting flies. I'm that filthy. Every now and then, it instills a sense of awe in me. Yeah. We're doing some really good stuff. Hey. Amaze this balls. This is smokier. Amaze balls, even. But it's not totally wrong. What is this? Nah, this, nah, the Whiskey Galore has a little bit more earth funk. It's not the same. What is that? That's Ben Riek. Yeah, it's, uh, you're less 70% there. The Craig Gellicky was closer. Yeah. But I really like the Ben Riek too. Let's mix them together, see what happens. Josh Barris. Imagine throwing a flaming brick into that room. Ah, oh, why would you even? You're banned. <sighs> Never come back. You're out of here. Dude, I, I have nightmares. I, think... I have nightmares where I get a phone call that the tower is on fire. And the only thing I can think of is not the books, <laughs> right? Not the art gallery. Not the art gallery. Not which the wine has, cellar. All I want to do is be like, save the whiskey. Someone put like one of those Hollywood uh, 
landing pads over there in the woods, and we'll just huck bottles at it as fast as we can. They're like, how did he die? Well, Same he went back for the whiskey. <laughs> jump, jump through 60, 60 foot up, jump through the window, cradling the whiskey, and decided to land on his back. Yeah, to save the bottles. Yeah. <laughs> Wisdom for wizards. My wife and I are currently planning our getting out of student loan debt vacation. Oh, nice. We have decided to take a week in Ireland. Living the dream. Followed by a week in Scotland. Well done, you. Partially inspired by my love for whiskey and our mutual love for the landscape and culture of the two. Yes. Have either of you been across the pond and visited distilleries in either country? Any particular distilleries you'd recommend whether you have or haven't gone? Okay, so. No, I have not. I've yes. Scotland, no, I've not been to Ireland. Furthest I've been is Australia. I haven't been to Scotland, Ireland, England. Okay, so here's what I would say. Um, when I went, I wasn't as into whiskey as I am now. And so I'm the wrong person to give you the insight. However, there are a lot of people in our comments yeah. who live in Scotland and Ireland and could tell you exactly where you needed to go. I just had a whole group of our Somalias, two who are touring Ireland right now, yeah. and two who are touring Scotland right now, and I've got another two or three who just came back from touring Scotland. Right. So I could ask their opinions, we could put it in a video, but I'd be willing to bet we've got plenty of viewers who live there who could put in the video comments of this video, right. here's where you should go, and here's what you should do. Speaking of, for all the new people here, uh, this is actually a nonprofit school, and there's a sommelier program in the school. That's why we're doing this channel, actually. So, yep. the sommelier program, what is it? Uh, what we do is uh, we train people how to present, talk about, market, and just be a, uh, a magnetic person using the medium of whiskey. All right, so you don't need to be in the industry per se. You don't need to be in the whiskey industry to attend our school. What we're training has more to do with marketing and presentation and people and uh, than it does to do with the real nitty gritty every detail of whiskey. Now, we do teach you a shit ton about whiskey because it would be really awkward to have a whiskey Somali that didn't know, <laughs> know about whiskey. whiskey. Yeah, right. But it's about actually sharing the love yeah. and enthusiasm. Uh, but if with if whiskey. all we did was teach you about whiskey, we could do it in one day. Mm -hmm. Because we also do public speaking, marketing communication, written advertising communication, and deductive tasting, it takes us two days. Yeah, and uh, apparently what kind of surprised me is it's going well beyond people in the industry. People yeah. that just want it as a skill set in their you know career. Yep. To be able to bring in people who they see as potential co colleagues, clients, partners. And that is working. That is way. absolutely working. Okay, uh, we'll put the link in the description below if you want to learn more about Somalia program. All right. I think we're good. I good. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.